My name is Jennifer Kranz. I'm a urologist. I'm the deputy head of the Department of Urology and Pediatric Urology at the University Hospital in Aachen, Germany. Acute uncomplicated cystitis is one of the most common infections we see in the outpatient setting. And that makes treatment choices especially important in the face of rising antimicrobial resistance. And according to the updated EAU guideline on urological infections, there are indeed non-antibiotic alternatives for treating local urinary tract infections such as cystitis. And those include herbal combinations, nutraceuticals, and also non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. And randomized controlled trials have shown that using painkillers or phytotherapy, for example, um, standardized herbal um, preparations like BNO um, 1045, can reduce the need for antibiotics. And in fact, across trials, antibiotic sparing strategies achieved about 63% reduction in antibiotic use. And of course, when we talk about non-antibiotic therapy, patient preferences play a central role. And these options may come off with a trade-off, a somewhat higher symptom burden, and a slightly increased risk of complications such as a pyelonephritis. The risk is about 5%. And that's why a shared decision-making is the key. Patients should be informed about the benefits and the risks, and the therapy should be tailored to their personal situation. Recurrent urinary tract infections are one of the leading reasons for repeated antibiotic use. And that's exactly where the EAU guideline emphasizes non-antibiotic strategies. And prevention follows a stepwise approach. Start with the counseling to address risk factors, then move on to non-antimicrobial measures, and only if necessary, then consider antimicrobial uh, prophylaxis. Importantly, any Underlying urological risk factors, for example, significant post void residual or pelvic organ prolapse, should first be identified and then addressed. And so, what are the options? We have behavior, behavioral measures such as adequate fluid intake, and those can already make a difference. And for, for postmenopausal women, um, vaginal estrogen therapy is a highly effective and strongly recommended option. And another option is immunomodulatory prophylaxis using agents that modulate the immune system to reduce the recurrence risk of urinary tract infections. And in addition, methanamine hipporate is guideline recommended with a strong evidence that it can be as effective as antibiotic prophylaxis. And there are also other approaches such as cranberry products, products demon nose, probiotics, or even endovesical installations. And those are supported by less consistent evidence, but they can still be considered and discussed with patients as a part of um, shared decision making. So the bottom line is yes, there are effective non-antibiotic strategies to reduce recurrent urinary tract infections. And by applying them, we can significantly limit the need for long-term antibiotics and at the same time empower our patients to play an active role in preventing urinary tract infections. That's a hot topic. As you all know, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. And even with advances in MRI, we still rely on prostate biopsy and the histopathological analysis for a definitive uh, diagnosis. And the key question is, which biopsy route best minimizes the infection risk? 
And according to the updated EAU guideline on urological infection, the answer is clear. The transperineal approach is preferred. And compared to the transrectal route, it carries a significantly lower risk of infections complications. And five major randomized controlled trials um, published in the past year consistently confirmed the disadvantages of the transrectal approach with regards to the um, um, post-operative uh, infections. And as a result, the EU recommendation to favor transperineal biopsy as the first line option remains unchanged. Recent evidence suggests that for low-risk patients, antibiotic prophylaxis may be safely omitted in transperineal biopsy, as infectious complications are extremely rare. So in summary, the transperineal biopsy not only reduces infection risk, but also advances, advances uh, antimicrobial stewardship by avoiding unnecessary antibiotics. And the direction is clear, Trexit, so exit from transrectal biopsy.